back in studio, Sharon Caddy, me, Christine Bentley, and joining us is our star hairstylist, Jason Kurtz. Hi, Jason. Hi, how are you? So how good are you? to have so you. Here. So it's nice you could pop in. You know, summertime is the, the time when everybody, I mean, you'd think it'd be the winter, but the summer, a lot of people find that the humidity makes their hair go frizzy. So that's when they're really concerned about the right cut and the right stylist and the right color and all that stuff. So, you know, there really is an art to picking a hairstylist. There is, and I think you have to kind of look at what's important for you. Okay, so... And whether you want a great hair cutter, whether you want a great hair dresser, or whether you want a great technician. So what's now, the difference? Yeah. The difference is people have their strengths. Like a great hair cutter is not necessarily going to be great with dressing hair. What does dressing hair mean? Putting hair up, making it curly, mm. styling hair. Or blow drying. Uh, and blow drying, yeah. Oh, yeah. so, well, I, so I'm looking for somebody who's going to do it all. <laughs> that happens, um, but when you get down to, let's say, a technician, which is a color, te which is a color technician. Okay. It's kind of, it, when they do the two, it's kind of jack of all trades, master of none. I think you have to find your strengths and stick to it. It's like going to a specialist or a doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, you choose what it is you want, and there really isn't any difference. Just because someone is a great hair cutter doesn't mean to say that they can dress hair and style hair and put hair up. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the situation with, you know, a, a great stylist is not necessarily a great cutter. Some people are great with short hair. Some people are great with long hair. You have to identify what it is you want. Um, well, I, do assume you, assume that we want. I want it all. We all want it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, we want. We want. We want it all. Can we get it in one person, or can we get it? At well, one you know, as you both know as facility. well as I do. I mean, when you come into the shop, I cut your hair. Yeah. But I don't color it. Aaron colors it. Right. So you got a, a difference there. Mm -hmm. He doesn't cut hair. Yes. That's not his strength. His strength is color. My strength is hair cutting. So, so for the average uh, woman out there, let's uh, let's say woman or man, mm -hmm. um, they are then looking for a salon which has the combination. I mean, you're I not going so. to go one place and have your hair colored, and then, and then another else. place to have it cut, and then walk down the street again to have it blow dried. No, but I mean, you you'll find a a, a great stylist knows how to blow dry hair, and yeah. I, I think you'll find that. You know, great hair cutters know how to blow dry hair. It depends on what length you're working with. Right. You know, some people are great, as I said, with short hair. And they can make that very versatile. Yet, when it comes to long hair, sometimes there's a block. And I, I think as well, in choosing a hairdresser, you need, you need to find out what it is you're going in for. As far as you're going in for a good time. Are you going in because somebody supposedly has a big name? Are you going in because they're just chatty and they keep you amused? I mean, there's so many different things. Well, what should you be considering when when you're considering a hairstylist? I, I think oh. I think what you need to do is look at the type of hair you have, look at the kind of color you have, and take it from there and do your research. Ask friends. I mean, when I. People on the street, as we talked about this before, you, you've seen a great haircut or a great hairdo, and you've spoken to people, yeah. oh, where did you get your hair done? I, I don't think it's any different when shopping around. Well, the, I think the mistake that many of us make is we see somebody with this great do, and then we go in and we say, here's the picture, I yeah. want that, and of course, then somebody like you will say, uh, well, you know what? You don't have that kind of hair. Exactly. Well, That's so a big I can that. cut this of like this, but it will never look like this, and you will never be able to maintain this. So it's hard, I think, we as clients, we see ourselves in a certain way. So we may want long hair, and our hair isn't suited for that, and our face isn't suited for that, and it makes us look older or, or shorter or whatever, and we can't see that. So. You have to develop that trust, I think, and I think but it's that's, hard that, that for comes with, That comes with communication. Right. A hairdresser has to be able to communicate with their client, and also the client has to be able to communicate with the hairdresser. Yeah. It's, and it's also about chemistry. Remember, we're in a service industry, but it's a very different service industry because we're in a touch service industry. So the chemistry 
reflects between the It does. Now, I just went through this with uh, my daughter. She moved away to school right. last year. And so she, rather than going to the hairdresser she'd been going to for years, um, she was in London, Ontario. And so I was down for a weekend with her, and she said, Mom, will you come with me? I want to go in and talk to And that's what we did. We went um, to an area where she knew there were a handful of different salons, mm -hmm. and she went into each of them and talked to, asked me, I please talk to someone. I'm looking to get this done. What? And she asked very specific questions. Um, would you... Is there a color person in a cut? And and she did ask price. She's a student. So she ended up walking out of there, and what she weighed was what services they said they could or couldn't do, um, whether she, and the, a feel that she got for the entire facility. It really made a difference to her. And and then, and of course, price in the end, if she came down to two and one was substantially more affordable for a student, then she, that's where she'd go. But I, I thought it was an interesting exercise to walk, watch her walk through it and, and see what she was looking for. Yeah, I, I don't think that's any different than the, the one I'm talking about. You, you gotta, you, you've got to research no matter what. And yeah. You've got you to just work with that person. If you like that person, if you feel comfortable with that person, mm -hmm. if you trust that person. I mean, you get into technical work. I mean... Everybody said a lot of people are in a rush when they do a hair. That they've got the haircut going, they've got the blow dry going, they've got yeah. the color going, going. How focused are they really? So you're suggesting, for example, let's say you do do your research and you talk to some friends in the mm -hmm. area because you're probably going to pick a salon mm -hmm. that's in your area. You're not right. going to travel 25 miles. Mm -hmm. So you you hear about and then go in and get a consultation. And uh, I mean. Would that be appropriate to say, okay, if I, come in, if I come in, if I make an appointment, what would you suggest for yeah. me? And then see if you're comfortable, if they're way off the mark. Because the thing is, the way you see yourself and the way your hairdresser or stylist sees you may be different. 100%. And you may yeah. never, you know, I mean, if you're working at cross purposes... Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've had yeah. these conversations we, we've before. We've had these conversations before. People and are saying, I want this, and you're saying, I, your hair won't do this, and you will hate me if I do this, because you won't. it won't look like yeah. that person. It's, yeah, Yeah, I, I think as well, it's, you know, you've got this whole thing with hairdressers in the past, you've got all these egos involved and everything else. I mean, you're going in for a service, and you want the best service you can get right the way from when you walk in, to the type of work that's being done, the quality of the work that's being done, the standard, and how you leave and how you can manage it after. It's not It's not the end when you walk out the shop. Mm -hmm. It's how it is after, too, how you manage it and how you can deal with it and how you can go back to a hairdresser that's already done your work or a haircut or a technician and say, look, I'm having a problem with this, I'm having a problem with that, can you help me with it? And... That's all part of the service as far as I'm concerned. And this is what makes a great mm -hmm. individual in whatever area they specialize in. Well, I think the biggest compliment is when you, you've had your hair done mm -hmm. and a friend of yours who may be also a mega stylist says, that's the best your hair has ever looked. Yeah. Then I know I'm, on the, <laughs> yeah. I'm in the right place. <laughs> and I think a lot of hairdressers have that problem that they... They find it hard complimenting another hairdresser's work. and Not my friend. No, that's no, your he friend. Said, he but said, there don't are you ever leave there. That is the best it's ever looked in the 20 yeah. years I've known you. But you'll get situations where, a, you know, where a client will walk in and you know, her hair could be not quite right and they, they've come into you for the first time. There's a reason why they've come into you. You have to find out why they're coming to you. Yeah. And what it is they're looking for and why it didn't happen with the last person. You're not there really to judge the person who did it before. No. You're there to keep that client happy and if that means fixing something, well then that's what you do. And you work with it and you, you provide that service to, to keep them happy and make them look the best they can. Well for some people though, hair is everything. Everybody has their thing. Mm -hmm. And I know people who worry about their hair, and they and they just go, they hopscotch from hairstylist to hairstylist to hairstylist because of the color, because of the cut. They're just insecure about their hair, and it's it's an ongoing thing. It doesn't matter how fabulous everyone says it is; they always think they can do better. 
And well, you've, are, they you've had are, are they insecure about their hair, or are they insecure about themselves? Probably insecure about yeah. themselves. And that but, is, but that is something that you, as a stylist, you have, have to, to deal with. You have to, yeah. but you have to be able to assess that situation right there and then. I knew someone that was exactly that, and I'm sure she still does it. Uh, she would go wherever. If I went to someone and she goes, wow, where'd you get your hair done? She'd go there. She'd come out, look fantastic because it's been done. It's cut very nicely. So actually, I sent her to a couple of really great places. Hair would be cut beautifully. The color looked great. She'd be happy for two or three days until she shampooed and had to do her own hair. The problem she had was whenever she styled her own hair, she went back to that post-high school way of blow drying that she always did. And of course, you try to blow dry that old fashioned style into the new cut, doesn't work. And then she'd gripe for two or three weeks about they don't know how to do hair and move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. So, so far, it was kind of a. Yeah, which is sad, which is sad for the person that's done it because maybe yeah. that person that's done it is really good. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, it's, but, self, the but, but it's self sabotage yeah. because, you know, it doesn't take much to say to the hairdresser, I don't like this. And they're going to say to you, you have to blow dry it this way. That's but what I was going to say. Self sabotage. Like that's that's what I was going to say. If you get a new cut, I I've, I've asked myself, okay, when I blow dry it, what do I need to do? And and you can be shown the right way, which direction to roll the brush and what to do. Uh, but if you don't, there is that tendency. A lot of people tend to fall back into that old, you know, the old faithful, the the hairstyle they've been doing since they were fourteen. But it's a really soft point, mm -hmm. um, a touchy point with many many women. Their hair. Yep and their relationship with their hairstylist, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, because there are people who have gone to the same person for 30 years, they wouldn't, I mean, they will leave when that person dies. And other people who just hopscotch around, but it's an insecurity, right? Yeah, I mean, even at the salon, I mean, if you feel a client, if you're going stale on a client, or a client's going stale on you, I mean, and it happens. It, it's just the process of doing hair and, and the time period, but you know, you have to have other people around you that are working in the salon that you can move them on to or switch them over yes. and say, look, you know, why don't you try this one or why don't you try that yeah. one? Well, Jason, thank you again, as usual, uh, some invaluable tips for all our listeners and for us and things that we can uh, pass you. on to our friends. And uh, so happy to have you in. Click the channel subscribe button for full-length interviews and more from What She Said here on YouTube.